Discipleship is the concept of um, personal mentoring of the pastors to leaders and then the leaders to the people uh, below them that we can make disciples and train them to follow God totally to uh, help them personally uh, it can be one-to-one -one or in a small group uh, discipleship is important and powerful because uh, then we know what's going on with the uh, people and how we can help them now if we don't do personal discipleship they you know they might be attending church they might be doing ministry but their life may have problem so we need to know uh, how they're doing and then help them uh, personally okay now first we see that Jesus built up his disciples personally that Jesus uh, he chose the 12 disciples to follow him and then he trained them more than the other people so Jesus said many comforting words to his disciples he said to Peter when Simon uh, Peter uh, saw that uh, he you know he told uh, them to cast the net on the right side and then they caught many fish so when Simon Peter saw it he fell down at Jesus knees saying depart from me for I am a sinful man O Lord so uh, Simon Peter knew that he was a sinner when he saw that Jesus could command them to cast the net on the right hand side and then they could catch so many fish that Simon Peter knew that this is someone very special and then Jesus says something to Simon do not be afraid from now on you will catch men so Jesus comforted him and encouraged him and tell him, told him that from now on don't worry even though you are a common person and a sinner but I can use you greatly to catch people instead of fish now so Jesus said comforting words so when we disciple people we don't make them feel bad we make them feel good if they have problems we guide them to repent uh, when they do anything good we, we appreciate them and we say you're doing wonderful and then Jesus comforted people John 1 47 Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him he said of him behold an Israelites indeed in whom is no deceit so he encouraged Nathanael by telling him that you are a true Israelite and there is no deceit in you so he encouraged them personally and then um, okay that and then uh, this is the uh, okay it should be the third point John chapter 13 to 17 recorded Jesus speaking to the disciples so he uh, in chapter 13 to 17 that Jesus spoke to his disciples uh, on the last day before he was uh, when he was uh, giving them the uh, Holy Communion and also teaching them many things personally so that recorded Jesus doing special training to the 12 and number uh, here is five Jesus often took the disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane to sing and pray so they have been there before that was not the only time they went there they went there before and they went there to sing and to pray so that's the quiet time Jesus had uh, with these disciples praying to God and then six here Jesus talked to the disciples personally Simon Simon indeed Satan had asked for you that he may sift you as wheat but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail and when you have returned to me strengthen your brethren so uh, Jesus told Simon that Satan want to capture you he he here means he Satan want to have the whole of you and then that he will sift you as wheat that he want to do different things to you to uh, to test you to tempt you but I pray for you that your faith should not fail so uh, Jesus prayed for him when he knew that he was facing temptation Jesus did not give up on him he prayed for him that your faith should not fail and when you return when you have returned you strengthen your brother so Jesus uh, give him hope 
gave him hope that I care about you, even though Jesus knew that Peter would deny him three times that night. But still Jesus has prayed for him so that his faith will be strengthened so he can strengthen other people. So Jesus did different things to strengthen his disciples and train them. And then Jesus confronted his disciples and helped them to handle problems in their lives. So if they have problems, Jesus would confront them. Matthew 16, 22. Then Peter took him aside when Jesus said he was going to do, go to Jerusalem and to, he'll be uh, uh, arrested and then crucified and then he rose from the dead. And then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, Far, far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But he, returned, but he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are an offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. So, uh, so Peter told Jesus, don't, don't, don't go there. Don't go there to be arrested and crucified. And then Jesus said to him, because that came from Satan. He said, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me because you are not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of men. So here Jesus confronted Peter to repent and not to follow the uh, uh, the move of Satan. And then Jesus talked to the disciples personally. Simon, Simon, indeed. Now, um, there is another example. The example is that uh, before uh, Jesus ascended to heaven, he appeared to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And then he asked Peter, do you love me more than this? So that's another time when, when Jesus uh, face to face talk to Peter and ask him do you love me more than this before he sent him to uh, to sh uh, feed his sheep so here Jesus is giving the responsibility to Simon Peter and told him that uh, he need to first love Jesus before he can serve God so that's uh, Jesus uh, bringing giving him the commission and actually also to the, all the other disciples, uh, giving them the commission to, uh, to love God first before they serve God. And then Jesus sent his disciples and promised power and blessings to them. So Jesus, he sent them. So when we train our disciples, we also send them and, and find a work that is suitable for them and send them to do it and then uh, pray for them and give them strength and also guidance and find out if they are doing okay and how can they how they can improve so we want to find out and Jesus, here Jesus sent his disciples Mark 6 7 and he called the twelve to himself and began to send them out two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits so here Jesus sent the twelve first and two by two and then give them the power over unclean spirit and also pray for the sick and 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 cleanse the lepers and then matthew 16 18 and i also say to you that you are peter and on this rock i will build my church and the gates of hades shall not prevail against against it and i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will be loosened loosed in heaven so he said to Peter that on this rock I will build my church and the gate of Hades the gate of hell the gate of, uh, the gates of hell will not prevail against it so Satan cannot defeat the church when we trust in Jesus when we have a close relationship with Jesus Satan cannot prevail against the church now there are some people who who teach people and say and when you do uh, you know evangelism and when you cast out demons Satan will attack you but here Jesus said no the gates of Hades shall not prevail against you so when we trust in Jesus and have a close relationship with God then Satan cannot prevail against us but some people always make people fear and they spread this kind of teaching and say if you if you follow God, if you preach the gospel, if you go and cast out demons, then Satan will attack you. Now, if 
people have sins, they don't follow God, then they will be attacked by Satan. But if they love God and serve God, they will not be attacked by Satan. So we, we need to trust in Jesus and say, Yes, Lord, I know that you have victory over Satan. We don't have to be afraid of Satan. There are many people who are afraid of Satan. And also, it's Jesus who defeat over Satan. It's not us. It's Jesus. Jesus has already defeated over Satan and the evil spirit. So we have a close relationship with God and then follow God and obey God and turn away from our sins and obey Him and serve Him. Then we will have victory. Many people think they have to cast out demons from, uh, from the area before they can serve God. But it's Jesus who's given us authority. He said, uh, you know, I have given you the authority to trample over snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall harm you. So Jesus has promised us that He has given us authority. We don't have to be afraid of Satan and the evil spirit when we trust in Him and have a close relationship with Him and obey Him. But there are many people who say that Satan will try to attack you. You have to attack Satan. The work to attack Satan is Jesus' work. And we, for us, is to trust in Jesus and have a close relationship with Him. Now you notice in the uh, Lord's Prayer, Jesus said, you know, uh, He just said, deliver us from evil. Just ask God to deliver us from evil. That evil can mean evil things or the evil one, the devil. So deliver us from the, uh, the devil and from temptation. So Jesus said, you know, you don't have to, it's for us, it's not for us to say, cast out the demons in this area. It's for Jesus to do that. For us, we just obey Him and have a close relationship with Him. And then Jesus can prevail over Satan. When we preach the gospel, we are prevailing against Satan. And, I, and Jesus said, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth, you'll be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth, you'll be lose in heaven. Now here, it's mainly it's talking about the, the power of the gospel. That what, whom you bind on earth means that you, because they don't repent. And then, and then they refuse to repent, you, uh, you confront them and guide them to repentance and they don't obey and they don't repent, then you bind them on earth unless if they repent. If not, they are bound in heaven. And whoever we lose on earth, that means we forgive on earth, they will be forgiven in heaven. When we in Jesus' name declare that because they trust in Jesus that they are forgiven, then they are forgiven in heaven. Okay, and then Mark 16, 15, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 17, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly, anything deadly, it will, not, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Verse 20, And they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord worked with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. So here Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So here is the Great Commission. And then, in Mark, it says that these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak new, with new tongues. So that uh, these signs, these miracles will follow those who believe. That you can cast out demons and you will speak with new tongues. And, you, and, and they will take up serpents. If they drink anything deadly, they will, it will by no means hurt them. Now, this is... I think this is for uh, the time when we are being persecuted, not when we just go and play with snakes or, or drink poison. But it's when we are forced, when we are put into a place where there are snakes to attack us, or when we are forced to drink poison, that we can ask God to deliver us from the poison and give us health. And then we can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So here Jesus sent us. Sent us. Now notice that this is all those who believe. These signs will follow those who believe. So all those who believe have the authority to lay hand on the sick and they will recover. So all Christians have the authority to lay hand on the sick for the recovery, for healing. 
Now, of course, if people still have demons or have serious sins or have uh, a serious emotional problem, then they should not lay hand on people because the evil spirit can pass under the people they lay hand on. And they should cleanse the life, repent of the sins, and then love God and follow God. And then the pastor should test them to find out that if they are okay to lay hands on people. We should train people, train more people that they have the, uh, that their life is cleansed, that they are not living in sin and they have victory over Satan. And then they can lay hands on people and that these people can serve God with power and authority. So uh, this is a promise of God that all can, you know, all Christians can lay hands on people. It's not just pastors. And then verse 20, and they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. So the purpose of the miracles, the signs are to confirm the word of God, which we preach. That the purpose of the miracles are to confirm God's word, that this is God's word, this is God working there. So, um, so the miracles are not the, the purpose itself. The miracles are to prove that the Lord is living. He is God. Now there are people who said that Mark 16 verse uh, 9 on to verse 20 is not in the original text. Now that's not true. Actually, you know, they said that because um, some of early manuscripts don't have this portion. But actually, other than the manuscript, there are translation of the Bible before the 4th century. And also the, uh, the church fathers, they quoted this passage. So we know that this passage was in the original text. It was, some people said that it only came into being in the 4th century, but actually uh, in the old translations. And also the church fathers quoted this passage and the old translations included this text. So we know that this text was there. And uh, also it's God who preserved the Bible. God will not leave something which is not from Him to stay in the Bible. Rather, I think it's some people who don't believe in miracles and they take this portion out later. They think this is not going to happen. Some people, some uh, after the early church, some Christians don't believe that they can still have miracles and they take this portion out. So I think it's some people who took out this portion rather than some people added this portion because this portion was in the uh, translation before the 4th century and also in a, a writing of the church fathers. Okay, and then Jesus sent his disciples and promised power and blessings to them. Acts 1.8 But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the, the earth. So Jesus has promised us the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. But we must remember the most important thing is the Word of God, to preach the Word of God. And then the, uh, the Holy Spirit will give us power to have this power of the Holy Spirit. When we have faith in God, when we pray for people, there will be people who are healed. Now there, there could be people who are not healed, but in the Bible we saw that even when uh, Paul first preached to the people in Galatia, he had sickness. And also, uh, first uh, Tim uh, Timothy, Timothy had uh, because of his sickness, he can. Uh, Paul told him he can drink some wine, and also um, Epaphroditus, uh, his uh, Paul's disciples also had sickness. So it doesn't guarantee that we don't have sickness. But when we pray for people, there are people who are healed for a proof that. This is the work of God that He can heal. Okay, so how do we do discipleship to people? First point, when Christians go to church, it does not mean that they will grow automatically. They don't grow automatically. We need to have people to help them. Many even fall away from Christ after a while. And, so, and also leaders need support to serve God better and to face difficulties in the ministry because when leaders serve God, they might face difficulties. And pastors too, they face difficulties. So pastors can ask the help of other pastors. And then 
if any pastor is here, you need help, you can, you can send messages to me and I'll respond to you. And because, uh, because we are facing uh, difficulties in ministry, Jesus helps us, but there are difficulties in the world because people don't obey God all the time. Many people don't follow God all the time, and it's not easy to, uh, to, uh, to serve God and help the church to grow. But Jesus said, the yoke, His yoke is easy, His burden is light, that when we trust in Him, there will be growth and, and we can change people's life. But in the process, it's still a lot of hard work. So we need to trust in God and say, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, we don't need to worry. But at the same time, we realize that pastors and leaders are facing difficulties. We need to learn to put down our burdens. We need to learn how to have strength from God. We need to learn how to handle the different problems and how to be more effective in our ministry. So if you have any questions, you can ask me. So our leaders, they need help. So we need to help them. And, and then our experience of victory over difficulties will help us to help other people. That how we overcome our difficulties will help us to help others. So the le leaders need support to serve God better and to face difficulties in the ministry. Leaders can burn out in the ministry. With discipleship, we can help lay people and leaders to grow and serve better. So people can burn out and even pastors can burn out if we don't have strength from God. So we need to have strength from God and always believe that God loves us. And when we serve God with a pure heart, God is very, very happy and God will reward us and bless us. So we need to trust in Jesus' love so that we have strength. But many people who serve God always accuse themselves and say, oh, I'm not doing so well, the church is not growing, it's my fault, and, and then they, accuse, they are accusing themselves. We don't want to accuse ourselves. We want, actually, we need to disciple ourselves too. We need to feed ourselves with the promises of God, with the grace of God, with the power of God. We need to come to God and trust in Jesus. He is loving me. And whenever I follow Him and obey Him, He is very happy. Whenever I love Him, He prepare for me things I, my ears have not heard and the eyes have not seen and the human mind has not thought of. So God has prepared all these things for us. And then whenever I even give a cup of water to a little one, Jesus will remember and He'll reward me. So all these promises give us strength. Help us to believe that God is helping us. We don't need to worry. But there are some people who are used to giving themselves accusation and giving accusation to people. This is not what we should do. You know, the Bible says that Satan is the one who is accusing the brothers, not we, we should not be doing that. We should be encouraging people. Now, if they sin, then we guide them to repentance. We ask them, uh, do you think this is right? And uh, do you think uh, it's necessary for you to repent and turn away from sins? And, and how, do you, how can you obey God? And how can you overcome those sins? So we guide them to repentance, not to accuse them or yell at them. If they've done something wrong, we don't yell at them. We, we uh, encourage them, we uh, guide them to have strength. Number two, there can be different levels of discipleship. The pastors the, uh, disciples the church leaders. The church leaders disciple pe people under them. The people under the church leaders will disciple others. So uh, in a church, there can be discipleship so that everyone has someone to take care of their spiritual life. And then next, how can we do discipleship? It can be done in small group or one-to-one. -one. The leader would help the disciples in these areas, in the spiritual life relationship with God. So how can we have a strong relationship with God? So we pastors need to have this experience, how to have strength from God, how to have forgiveness of God, how to turn away from our sin, how to say no to sins and hate sins, and then to obey God. We need to learn how to overcome our sins and have victory and have strength from God whenever we pray. That we believe in Jesus loving us. And then when uh, He's loving us, He's helping us. So when we praise God, we'll have strength. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we declare God's love for us, we'll have more strength and more joy. 
So we need to help people to have spiritual life and how to overcome sins and how to be strong in the Lord. And then B, the inner life, the thinking, the emotions, the sins, intentions, how to take care of these things, how to take care of the thinking so that we are always positive. Now, some people say things are difficult. It's difficult. Now, but Jesus has promised us that in all temptation, he, he will open a way for us that He will help us that, you know, all those who wait on Him will be renewed like an eagle, that we can soar high, that we can have strength. God is a God of victory. So no matter how bad the world is, even in the last days, in the book of Revelation, uh, in the book of Revelation, many people say, wow, there's a lot of suffering, a lot of uh, work of the devil, or oh, it's terrible times. But when we read the book of Revelation carefully, you'll find that it talks about that it is God who gives authority for the suffering and also gives the authority to the Antichrist to have the 42 months. It's God who gives the authority. So it's God who allows these things to happen. And it's God who sends the two witnesses that they can witness for 1,260 days. That's also 42 months, three and a half years. And, and that we, if anyone attack them, they can have fire coming out from the mouth and kill these people. And then he, they can send different kind of disaster to the world. So these two persons are strong witnesses that God is powerful even though they were killed, but then they rose from the dead and then they were taken up to, into, to heaven. So people who want to believe in Jesus can see that, wow, God is more powerful. And also there are three angels that are sent out to fly to every nation, to every tribe, to declare to them, to tell them to trust in Jesus and fear God and honor God. And also tell them the Babylon is falling and also uh, that everyone who received the beast, the mark of the beast and worshiped the beast will go to hell. So these three angels going out to the whole world to declare. Now this third angel tell the people, if anyone received the mark of the beast, uh, you will uh, go to hell. Now this declaration should be before these people take the mark of the beast. If everyone has taken the mark of beast, it's too late. So the angels should do it before they, uh, that, uh, uh, the Satan could force the people to take the mark of the beast. So the angel declare that. So it's God who is in victory. And then we have victory over Satan by uh, our witnesses, our testimony of the word, and also the, by the blood of the Lamb. So we can have Christ, uh, victory, even though many Christians will be killed. But when we trust in Jesus, He is in victory. And even if we are killed, we'll go to he heaven and we can have eternal life and we'll be with Jesus right away. And when we are tortured, there are a few things we can do. We can ask God to set us free, like Peter, that he was in prison, and also Paul, that God can take Peter out of the prison and God can also loosen the chain on Paul. And so we can ask God to do that, or we can ask God to take us to heaven right away. So God has, uh, He is in control, even though there is suffering. But many people think of just run away from the, uh, the great tribulation. But we should say, we can have victory in the tribulation. We don't have to be afraid. And now when we are, you know, actually the um, COVID-19 is a warning to the world that this can be a beginning of the, of the suffering in the world, that this problem will cause financial problem in many countries. But as Christians, we trust in God and we pray to God for provision. God can provide for us. Okay. And then, so... We need to handle our problems in our thinking, in our emotions, uh, that we want to be peaceful and joyful all the time and not to be sad and angry. And then to overcome sins. Whenever sinful thoughts appear in our mind, immediately we say that sins are destructive. Any sin, any lust, any worry, any doubt, any hatred, anger, all this can hurt us. 
So we say, I hate the sins, I want to say no to the sins, I want to be nice to the people, I want to repay evil with goodness, I want to be kind to the people and forgive them. That is victory. Instead of hating them and, and fighting against them, we want to love them. And our intentions, do we have pure intentions to bless people, to glorify God? Or do we have the intentions just to get blessings for ourselves? When we serve God, we don't just want money for ourselves. There are people who tell people, give more money and you'll get more money. And then uh, to encourage people to give money. Now, it's right for people to give money. But many people use, uh, they say, if you want money, then you give more and then you'll get more money in order you know, to make people give. We should not do that. We should not do that. We encourage people to give and say, God, you know, God is a God of blessing and He knows your giving and He will bless you. But not so that we can get more money. Uh, we encourage people to give because of the love for God. God is so good that they want to give. Now, God will bless them, but we, but we don't give to get the blessing in exchange. It's God's good will that He want to, wants to bless us. And then handle personal problems. For instance, problem in family, in a marriage, in a ministry, all these problems, we want to disciple them and help them to handle the problem. And the relationship with people and family. So, so in the discipleship time, we ask them, you know, how is your uh, spiritual life? How is the relationship with God? Uh, how can you get strength? Do you have strength? And how can you overcome your difficulties? And then, and we we want to have this habit of encouraging them instead of rebuking them all the time instead of you know just telling them you're wrong but we want to tell them that what you're doing is good and and uh, do you think you can improve how can you improve how can you do better so we we guide them to improvement instead of rebuking them to improve so we help them with their inner life help them with the handling personal problem and relationship with people. And some people have problem relating to people or to their family members or to their spouse. So we want to counsel them how to, how to help them. So in a way, discipleship is like counseling, but it has a goal to build up people to, to serve God better, to build up the whole spiritual life. And it's not just a one-time thing. It includes counseling, but it's not just counseling. It, it uh, is more important to build up people's uh, strength to serve God uh, and, to, and to cleanse their lives so that their life is have a good relationship with God and then they're free from sins and problems so they have more strength to serve God. And then the devotion in serving God. Do they have the devotion? Do they have the motivation to serve God? And then F, how to serve God and how to handle success and problems in serving God and how to improve and go to a higher level. So we want to help them too, how to serve God better, how to do evangelism, how to strengthen people's spiritual life, how to build up the church, how to help, help the people to love each other, to have more joy, that the church becomes a joyful church. So how to serve God better and how to handle success and problems in serving God. When we serve God, there are problems and there are success. When there is success, how can we handle our pride? How can we give glory to God? And then when there are problems, how can we handle it? And how to improve and go to a high level. So how can we improve in our ministry and go to a high level? And G, confronting people with problems in their life. So if there are problems in their life, then we want to confront them in a gentle way uh, to let them know that we care about them. And then if there are problems, uh, if they are habitually late, if they have s problems with sin and problem with relationship with people, problem in serving God, then we will ask them, uh, uh, do you, have you noticed that you have this certain problem? So what can you do and how can you overcome this problem? Do you want to overcome this problem? What are something you can do? So discipleship is helping people to face these different problems in their life and to build up strength in God and to build up spiritual life. And it's a good way if pastors are willing to disciple each other. So a group of pastors locally can gather together and share with each other about our uh, difficulties and about how we have been serving God, how we have strength, and to encourage each other. And I encourage you too, after this 
session that you would have some time sharing with each other how to apply this teaching and how uh, whether your your ministry has been uh, difficult or has been uh, uh, successful and have strength so we can share with each other and encourage each other and help each other to face our difficulties and to be better in ministry and the leaders are most important for the growth of the church so the pastors should spend more time with the leaders if leaders are strong and wise they will bless the church if they have problems they will ruin the whole ministry what I mean is they have serious problems okay now we need to understand it's more important to train the leaders like Jesus trained the 12 it's the most important to train the 12 so the the leaders are most important for the growth of the church so if the pastors spend more time with the leaders the, and then the pastors should spend more time with the leaders and if the leaders are strong and wise they will bless the church and because they are strong and peaceful and joyful and uh, loving and kind to people then the whole church will will grow and it, they will affect the other people and the pastors too the pastors should come to the people with peace and joy and love and confidence and strength not with condemnation and accusation but with joy and peace that we lead people to repentance with peace not with accusation and then if the leaders have serious problem I should add serious problems they can ruin the whole ministry like if they steal if they have immorality if they commit adultery if they yell at people if they hurt people then it will ruin the church so it's very important that we build up the spiritual life of the leaders it's important to spend time with them five confrontation in discipleship should be done gently so if we want to do confrontation it should be done gently there should be confrontation confirmation of the strength of the person so we should confirm that they are doing well that they are strength they they have strength what they are doing well we should compliment them applaud them for for what they're doing well and a person doing discipleship should express that he confronts for the goodness of the person being disciple so he he confront the person not to hurt but to to uh, give strength and encourage and to build him up and so in an earlier session we talked about how to handle problems of people so that person need to uh, you know guide the person to face this problem and and first to uh, confirm them that to tell them you are precious you are important you are precious in, uh, to Jesus and to us and you are important in the kingdom of God and I'm happy to be able to uh, help you and strengthen you and I have noticed these certain uh, problems and have you noticed that and uh, we want to talk about this and face this problem uh, so that you can serve with power so are you willing to do that can you tell me more about it and and what are some difficulties you are facing so we can ask them what are some difficulties they are facing and what can they do to do better what then can they do to overcome the problem and then we will follow up on them so we need to do confrontation but confrontation should be done gently and with love so that they know that we love them we care for them care about them so we do uh, confrontation okay so uh, I don't know if you have been doing discipleship with the leaders that uh, we should start doing this and talk with them and you find out you might find out wow they have so many problems they have so much pressure they have so many unhappy experiences they feel unhappy now they should be encouraged to talk about this problem instead of saying don't talk about it avoid the problems they should be encouraged to talk about the problems and then we don't accuse them we don't say how can you have these problems you should trust in God you know some people just say trust in God you know but we need to learn to how to trust in God to handle our problems this is something we need to learn we don't just say trust in God and pray and then and then problems will go away it, it won't go away like go away like that we need to handle the problems we need to face them so we need to help the people to face the difficulties with peace and strength and calmness and not to be affected by by the problems so in a discipleship there is need of the skill of counseling that we have talked about before 
that we want to listen to people's needs and and uh, feel their feelings tell them oh I know that it's difficult for you I know that there is pressure on you I know that uh, you have been doing well and appreciate what you're doing and I know that it can give you pressure it can make you feel unhappy and I care about you and I want to be able to help you so um, and you are willing to uh, work on these problems and I have seen some strength of yours you can do better there you can uh, this is your strength your evangelism is your strength care for people is your strength and and this is really appreciated I appreciate I really appreciate you uh, for your qualities so use that more and then also teach other people uh, about this life of yours that you have the heart to have compassion on people you have compassion on people this is wonderful and you can share with people how you can have this compassion so that more people can have compassion like you so we encourage them with their strengths and then if they have a problem we guide them to repentance and then we guide them to find out why this happens very often people have problems that reoccur because they have been hurt by people because they have had anger, because they have uh, unpleasant experiences, and so they lose hope or they have low self-image and they think they cannot do anything great. So they have all these problems that affect them. So they, we need to help them to face a problem and to say, uh, even though you have been mistreated by people, but you're still an important person. And you can declare to yourself, I'm loved by God, I'm important, I can rejoice. I can enjoy God and God will use me greatly so we need to believe that the Bible confirms people the Bible gives hope to people now recently I helped someone who said that he re she heard voices from Jesus but the voice she heard from Jesus was negative and uh, it's not biblical now it's very important that we discern the voice inside us. Sometimes people are affected by this voice. Sometimes it's their own thinking. They say, oh, I'm no good. I cannot do it. Uh, I, I, I never be successful. I'm a failure. So they might have this inner voice and they need to respond to this with the promises of God that we are the chosen generation. We are the kingdom of God. We are the chosen people and we are the holy nation. We are different from other people. We have strength. We have the love of God. God is loving me when I sincerely trust in Jesus. When I sincerely trust in Jesus, nobody can take away my blessing. So I cannot, I don't have to be afraid. Okay? So we need to help people to have this positive mentality from the Bible. The Bible teaches positive mentality. And when we have sins and problems, we repent as we ask God to forgive us. And God is very happy. So there's reason to be happy. Even when we have sinned, we repent and then God is happy. And then we can start again. Instead of saying, oh, no hope, no hope. We don't have to say there is no hope. Okay. And then six, the process of discipleship can include this praise and prayer. So we can have a time of praising God together and prayer. And then a Bible study related to the need of person being discipled. So we can have a short Bible study on a few verses that is related to the person being discipled and then see confirmation to the person being uh, being discipled I'm sorry this is discipled and listening to his condition so we confirm the person and say you're wonderful you have been doing well and you're important so we tell them that uh, what you're doing is great um, now if they are even when they have problem, they have tried, and then we can still say, you have tried hard, you have tried hard, you have worked hard. That's wonderful. And then responding to his condition, discussion, guidance, uh, and confrontation when needed. So we can do uh, responding. We respond to his condition, and then we have kind of discussion on certain things, how to do certain things, how to overcome certain problems, and also we give them guidance and confrontation when needed when there is need for confrontation so we can have responding to the condition uh, and then it should be response to its condition discuss the uh, discussion of the condition and then guidance and confrontation when needed and e discussion about direction and action for the future so how can he do better how can he improve 
how can we change some behavior so discuss how to do it and then blessing giving to the person so we respond to the person's needs and condition and then we discuss with them to how to apply it now when it's done in a group then people share with what they face you know share what they face and then we respond to them in the whole group so that they all can learn together and it's most important to disciple these people people who love God strongly so if you find people who love God strongly in a church people who are motivated to serve God they have strong motivation to serve God these people when they're disciple they can go higher and higher when people love God strongly when they love God strongly then they have the potential to be used by God greatly and then people who are motivated to serve God they want to serve God uh, then they have the potential so it's important to disciple these people so that they can go to a higher level